Today, we're looking at a brown ink by Sailor IAI Dark Green Brown, and I do not know what the IAI stand for. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around to the part you're most interested in, or if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. You could also follow me on Instagram, and if you like fountain pen ink reviews, I would invite you to subscribe. In order to make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then inked up this Retro 51 Tornado with a broad nib, used it to write for a day, and took my notes for this video. This first writing sample is done with a standard set of paper, Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. Now, there are additional writing samples that will occur later. Now, let's look at the writing sample. I picked this ink up in bottle form, and it's interesting because it, their boxes all have individual labels, and it came in a bottle like this, and I had ordered two, figuring on the Amazon's, Amazon, not on the uh, eBay, that I was likely to lose one, and then one both. To keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet Extra Fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The Extra Fine is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, six seconds to dry. The medium is the same tone as the Extra Fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, 13 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both, they're showing us no color variation, and we don't get any. Tomoe River. No bleeding, normal Tomoe River ghosting. The 1.1 with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, 10 seconds to dry. The medium is the same tone as the extra fine and the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 19 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show us no color variation, because there is none and Rhodia, with no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 had no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, five seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine and the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 10 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show no color variation because there is none. I agree with Vita that we learn a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water. And looking at the chromatography, I would have thought there would have been a lot of depth to this ink that there was not. We get a uh, very a kind of a gray at the bottom and it very immediately forms a line and starts pushing its way up. Now we get a brown but we also get this really neat orange that comes in and a very, very light turquoise blue, like a highlighter color, that comes at the very top. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And that dark gray that was originally there is really forming a line at the bottom. Most of it is there. Some of it is still moving up. We get to see that that is a red-leaning brown that is up next. We see just hints at the bottom of what are like the fingers sticking down. Uh, we get hints of red. Now we get a lot more of the orange and we still can quite easily see that very bright highlighter kind of turquoise. Resistance tests are done to see how well this ink can be expected to perform on the page and more importantly, how hard it might be to clean from your pen. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, I would feel perfectly safe using this in a note-taking situation. It had no effect whatsoever on this ink. And that's very obvious when we look at what happens with water, which is nothing. It had no effect. Pen flush is starting to break it up, but just barely you start to see it lighten up a bit. Now I did have to use pen flush to get this out of my pen. The one-third bleach solution is removing a lot of the ink, but it's still leaving some brown staining behind. But again, I only had to use pen flush. For the inks I tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. I'm also linking a video that shows how I do my testing and my calculations. 
Sailors, IAI has a viscosity of 2.17, making it normal. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. I average all of those. Now for the inks I've tested, I've found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with a realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Sailors IAI Dark Green Brown Sailors IAI Dark Green Brown has an average dry time of 9 seconds, making this a fast drying ink. Instead of finding Instead of finding an ink that looks like Sailor's IAI Dark Green Brown, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went for a nice bright green, and I chose Robert Oster's Ride Green. The second writing sample is done on Twisby 28-pound copy paper and 20-pound copy paper. Here we're looking at Twisby notebooks. Now we get no bleeding, but we do get some show through. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 7 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine and the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 11 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show no color variation and there was none. So I went for cheaper papers because this was not a, a fun to look at ink. Now we do get bleed spots, but it's not coming through the paper and it does have some show through, but not too bad. This is the 28 pound premium paper. The medium has a lot of feathering all over it. It has no spread halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the medium. It has a lot of tiny feathers all over it with no spread halo sheen, no shade, one second to dry. The scrubby shows no color variation and we didn't get any, but hey, why not look at the 20 pound cheap copy paper where we get a ton of bleed not touching the page underneath but not letting you use the back of the page a lot of show through the medium has a ton of feathering no spread halo sheen no shade medium is the same tone or sorry extra fine is the same tone as the medium it has a ton of feathering all the way through it it has spread i missed marked it as a medium uh, no, it has spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, one second to dry. The scrubby shows no color variation, and we didn't get any. And that's all that I have for the writing sample. So what do I think of Sailor's dark green brown? It's black. Not green, not brown. I didn't care for it. This is an ink that I truly am happy to have used up when I used it up, so that it's gone. Now, not because its performance was bad, but the color to me was consistently just yuck. Yuck. So what nib and pen are going to give the best writing experience with this ink? With its yuck color? It doesn't matter what you choose. You're going to get the same tone with no color variation regardless. So this is dealer choice. Good news. If you've made it this far, and according to my analytics, 50% of you aren't, and you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. If you are not subscribed, I would invite you to subscribe, and thanks for watching.